I'm Ryan Yagatsu, and welcome to Community Corner. Aaron? Welcome to Community Corner. My name is Alan County Castle. And I'm David DeWitt Taylor. Today we're going to meet Christine Le Lefchek, who attends Wayne State University. Wayne. Works in the Master's degree in Social Work. Mm, interesting. For well, those with advocates, those with mental challenges, we look forward to learning, interviewing, and information sharing with you, our very loyal, loyal viewers, to guide you and focus on the others of advocates and ad advocating in the process. So, ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Kristen? Kristen, well, thank you for coming down, my dear. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So, tell us. Please tell us a little about yourself and your family and growing up, your background and growing up. Okay, well, um, I guess I feel like I had a pretty normal childhood. Um, and uh, I have a form of muscular dystrophy. It's called spinal muscular atrophy. Um, and I was born with that, so I've never walked. I've been in a wheelchair my whole life. So um, I kind of think of my wheelchair as kind of a part of who I am and my identity um, because it made me special. It made me unique and kind of stand out. And um, when I got older, I first took an interest in advocating for people with disabilities when I got my first real job um, working for recipient rights for Oakland County Community Mental Health. Ah, uh, yes. And um, when I started teaching people about their rights receiving public mental health services, I got to learn a lot about the history of disability rights and I met a lot of people that had disabilities and learned about what kinds of challenges they had. And so I took a special interest in advocating for people, helping them find resources, um, and just helping other people that don't have disabilities um, understand what the, the misconceptions that are out there about disability. That was <coughs> simply beautifully beautiful. Thank you. Aaron, have, Aaron have a question? Yep. Um, uh, what are your hobbies and interests? My hobbies and interests? Yep. Um, well, besides, I do a lot of public speaking. That's um, cool. Just out, not just for any um, professional reasons, but just because I enjoy it. Um, one of my most recent hobbies and topics of interest is uh, public transit. Um, uh. I'm a big advocate for public transit mm. and for us getting a better uh, public transportation system um, in uh, Southeast Michigan. So I've been mm -hmm. doing a lot of uh, advocacy in that area. Um, and then some other things are just like I love to bead. I make jewelry. Um, <laughs> I, I like to write. Um, I uh, read a lot. So, yeah. Well, that's cool. fun. So. I'm reading. What a cool stuff. Thank you. Amazing, isn't it? Reading and writing. Yeah. Yeah. Things I never thought of learning about when I was growing up. <coughs> Guys, yeah. please share about your various school activities and perhaps your school challenges. School activities and challenges? Yes. Um, for school, I'm getting my master's in social work. So what social work is really all about is advocacy. So I picked my degree category because of what I was already doing and already enjoying. Um, social work is about um, helping underserved um, minorities, basically, and, and um, connecting to resources. Um, they might help them with uh, coordination of services. They might be behind policy 
and program development. Um, so I'm in macro social work, which basically means instead of working with people one-on-one -on -one individually, I'm learning about the bigger picture about how to influence policy, politics, things like that that affect people and how to be an advocate for people. In school growing up, your school growing up. Oh, in school growing up. Um, in school growing up, there was, I think the biggest challenge I had growing up and, and going to public school is that there weren't many other kids like me. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, until I got to high school, I didn't know anybody else that was in a wheelchair. Anybody? Nope, Ooh. I was the only one. So I think a lot of other kids um, are just scared to get to know and talk to somebody that has a difference. So um, the hardest part was learning how to come out of my shell and initiate conversation and communication with other kids because sometimes they were too shy to talk to me they didn't know what was the right thing to say or if they could ask me questions or any of that kind of stuff. And it took a long time for me to get the, the confidence up to be social. And I think the big part that helped with that was when I first went to Muscular Dystrophy Association, MDA camp, and I got to meet lots of other kids like me. And then that gave me kind of a boost of confidence feeling like, okay, I'm not the only one out there like this. Um, and it, it put, bring me out of my shell. Well, that was touch on one word, touching, simply touching. <laughs> yeah, so do you, so, so Christy, do you, do, you, do you live alone or do you live with others? I live <coughs> with others. Mm, okay. Um, I've never been able to completely live alone. I've had many roommates over the years. Really? I've moved many times. Um, that's one of the, the biggest challenges, I think, as an adult with disability, if with a disability, is I'll have to have special care services. Okay. Um, physical help, getting up in the morning and getting dressed and getting ready and all of those sorts of things. And um, the services that I receive, you, you may not get enough uh, to be able to live on your own might have to share those services with someone else or have other people that are willing to do things for you without being paid for it. Wow. So um, because of that situation, and that's a big topic for me as an advocate too, is that I feel like all people with disabilities should be able to live independently if they want to and not be forced into any sort of <coughs> institutionalized settings or congregate care or anything like that. Um, I really think that adequate home care services ought to be a civil right. I got you part of a community living services agency. Uh, please tell us more about that. I, I receive services from community living ah. services. Is that is that what you were asking? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yep. Um, that's how I get my home care services. Hmm. Um, you know that there's a couple of different public mental health providers that provide these services. Um, and uh, CLS in Ferndale is uh, my provider. Yes. Mm -hmm. CLS in Ferndale. Miss Annette Downey. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. I like their philosophy philosophy because they're all about self-determination, uh, oh about, yeah. about that, being oh no, in here. charge of your life and your services, and I like that. Yes. That word is a I big like importance. I love mm -hmm. In fact, I wish I was a part of it. Me too. I'm in Barlow. I wish you were. Good. Fun. Good. What involvement <laughs> do you have with CLS? Uh, what environment do I have? Development. Development. Development with CLS. Um, well, I, I just need to help with my day-to-day, -day, um, what they call activities of daily living. Um, and so when I found out about CLS, actually, when I first tried to get services, um, I was turned down originally. Um, I was told that, uh, and this was not from CLS, but 
going through the public mental health system, the application process. Um, they said that I didn't qualify because I didn't have a developmental disability. And this is part of where the advocacy stuff comes in. I had to look up and learn what the legal definition of a developmental disability meant. And what that means is that you're challenged in three areas of development, major life development. And I have mobility mm -hmm. impairments, um, self-care uh, challenges, and um, also I think the third one is capacity for independent living um, that I qualified under. So I was able to use that legal definition and advocate for myself. And then when I found out what my options were, and I went and interviewed at, at CLS, and I got to pick my support coordinator and all of that, I decided this was, CLS was the best place for me, um, considering my options to get services. Does that That's answer cool. your question? Did I answer that right? <coughs> okay. So do you receive support services? What's that, support <coughs> services? Yeah. Do you receive support, like from CLS or any other agency? Um, I actually receive support from a few oh. um, different places. All um, right. I'm also working with Michigan Rehabilitation okay. Services. Um, I've heard of them. Yep, yeah, and uh, hopefully after I get my degree, I'm going to get assistance with getting um, modifications <coughs> to a van. I have a van a right van. now that is is it, it's in 1995. 95 Ford? 40 Cano line, yes. Wow. It is it's very, old. very old. It has 190,000 some <laughs> wow. miles on it. Um, as you guys probably have heard before, uh, modified vehicles are very expensive. They cost over $50,000 wow. $50, with the modifications that I would need. This is part of the reason I'm such a big advocate for transit, because many people can't afford that kind of a uh, expense. Um, but um, since I am getting my degree, if I get a job, like I hope to, once I graduate, um, Michigan Rehabilitation Services is supposed to help me get the adaptation part of the cost covered. So. Nice. Mm -hmm. Good job, my dear. Good job. Thank you. Very good. Uh, what is your main focus in this, in this advocacy walk? My main a focus? Yep, your main focus. Um, well, as I was saying, the independent living um, is, is a very important issue to me. Um, transit is important too, but that's been kind of a later on secondary interest. My primary interest is um, keeping people with disabilities living in the community and being integrated with the rest of society. And um, there's, a, there's a bill that's been in Congress for several years now. It's called the Disability Integration Act. Okay. And it's a bill that I've been trying to push for people to know more about, to have awareness of. <coughs> um, because basically what that is, is a civil right it would be a civil right for people to receive enough home care services um, so that they can continue to live in their own home and they're not forced by uh, Medicaid cuts or lack of funding or anything like that to have to live in environments where they don't belong. Mm -hmm. I keep on fighting. I, 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 you know, I think we both well know someone like Ray Schuholtz, remember Ray? Yep. Ray Where do you plan and prepare your advocacy plans? My advocacy plans? Um, my advocacy plans are to keep doing what I'm doing, number one. Uh, number two, um, once I have my master's degree, I do plan to try to start my own nonprofit. I've already Ooh. started at the beginning of working on that. Um, it's a what they call social entrepreneurship business, which is one of the classes I'm taking 
in school right now too. It's it's basically starting something new where you can get sustainable money, revenue, at the same time that you're doing a social good. And so I have an idea um, for something that I think would definitely benefit uh, a lot of people out there like myself. Um, so that's one of the things on the horizon. And then besides that, I hope to keep raising awareness. Mm -hmm. I hope to keep advocating for the things I've already been advocating for, like public transit, and not just in Southeast Michigan, but I think that we should have it everywhere. I think that we're kind of All behind right. on that. So. So Chris, tell me, how did you find out and who to talk to with an advocate? How did I, I'm sorry, could you repeat oh, that thank for you. me? How did you find out about who to talk to with advocating? Who to talk to? Um, that's a really good question. Thank you. You, you end up finding out that networking is everything. Um, when you meet people that have a connection <coughs> to what you're interested in, I've learned the best thing to do is to ask them who do they know. And one person leads to another person, one organization leads to another organization, and pretty soon you end up with a whole network of people that you know to go to, to ask questions to, and, and it's helped me be the best advocate I can be. Um, like your guys says so, I think that connection came from Annette Downey from CLS. So. Oh yes, oh, cool. Director, Director Downey. <laughs> Thank you so Director, much. Director, you're the best. Thank you. Any other questions? Yep. Um. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> um, are you working with other organizations on the transportation needs? Yes. Cool. Um, I actually, my internship which I picked because I was already in 2016, there was a millage um, for regional transit that was on the, on the ballot and it lost by, unfortunately, less than a 1% margin. Aww. But I was part of that campaign um, for um, the Regional Transit Authority. There was actually some commercials at that time that they were playing, um, were showing people's real life stories. Um, and I was one of those people on those commercials. So when I was looking for my internship placement for my master's degree, I saw that Transportation Writers United um, in Detroit, based out of Detroit, which is an advocacy organization for public transit in the metro Detroit area, was one of the options. So I got my internship placement through them. And that's been a wonderful internship for me because they're already doing what I was already interested in, so. That, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Do you present your transportation advocacy plans at conferences? If so, do you receive a fee? No, I do not receive, I don't get paid for any of the advocacy work I do. Um, in fact, um, I was Miss Wheelchair in Michigan in 2015. Wow. And that is an advocacy competition, basically. Um, it's, it's not a beauty pageant. It's <laughs> a competition where people go and they do a speech, women in, in wheelchairs, um, and they choose a platform and uh, they talk about their platform and judges decide um, who wins, and then they get to have a year to travel around the state and do public speaking and talk about their platform and so mm. forth, and a chance to compete in Miss Wheelchair America. I did not win Miss Wheelchair America. You didn't? Nope, but I did win Best Speech <laughs> <laughs> in 2015. There you, there, there you go. <laughs> so all of the, all that public speaking and that kind of work that I do and in my internship, that is not paid. That's, this is, this is what I want to do because I want to do it, not for the money. Well, well, that, well, well that's good. Yep. So, do you, receive, do you receive funding support for your advocacy goals? 
Do I receive support for it? Yeah. Well, I do most of it on my own independently. Well, you do. However, um, you know, the, it's the people that you meet along the way that help you get those connections. Oh, that's or right. Or tell you about this opportunity or that opportunity that really help you get to the top. So it's not a formal kind of assistance, okay. but if it wasn't for people like you guys, you guys and, and other people out there that are doing their own types of advocacy, mm -hmm. that I get to do what I do. Uh, are you focusing on transportation for a country or for the or for a state? Well, my general focus right now is on so Southeast Michigan. Okay. Because we as a um, major metropolitan region, mm -hmm. we have the only ones that don't have a regional transportation system okay. in the whole country, the uh, major metropolitan region. And we spend less on our public transportation than any place, any other major metropolitan region in the, in the country. Ooh. So I'm, I'm putting that first. Um, but in doing that, I'm also communicating to people the benefits of having transit anywhere because the places that do have it, they have better economic growth. Um, people are able to get the jobs. It's you know, more um, socially equitable. Um, and so there's so many benefits that when you're talking about why we need it, you're essentially advocating for it in general for anywhere that doesn't have it. Do you, get, do you need help transporting yourself from one place to, to the other? Oh, place? getting around my yes. transportation, yes. yes. Um, in fact, the uh, gentleman that brought me here today yeah. Um, he's my, uh, he's a caregiver, but I particularly um, hired him for driving me um, well, places. Cool. And I actually did that because many people, many people that come into the caregiving field, um, when they apply for a job, unless you specifically tell them, they're not expecting to have to drive a big Van. Van like mine. That's a huge, uh, you know, um, conversion van. And not everybody's comfortable with uh, doing that kind of work. So after years of experience um, and learning that that doesn't always work out very well, um, I made an advertisement for somebody <coughs> um, specifically that would be comfortable with driving and he actually just got a job as a bus driver as well. So. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Congratula <laughs> congratulations, my good man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, man. Be hungry. <laughs> so he was already used to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, he just got that job. I, I like to think that I helped him get that job. There right you now. go, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Play with your meatballs. Be nice. That's a good that's a good way to think. That's a way to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Play with meatballs. Meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Play the meatballs. <laughs> <laughs> I have you developed a transportation advocacy team. I'm going to please share details. A part of an a transportation advocacy team. Advocate. Yes. An advocate team. Um. I well the people that I work with at Transportation Writers United. Um, their board, um, they're all very dedicated to, to advocating for transportation. That's why they're board members um, of TRUE. And then they have many, many volunteers as well um, that are uh, big transit supporters. There's also different advocacy groups um, that are specifically focused on that topic, um, like the Motor City Freedom Riders. Okay. Um, are also, so I consider all of them my team. There you go. Cool. Please tell us if you have a missing statement ah. or a website with lists of needs. Um, I don't, but Transportation Writers United does. Okay. Um, it's DetroitTransit.org. Yeah. All right. And so as far as my own personal mission, um, I don't have a, a, an actual mission 
statement, but all of the things that I've been talking to you guys about today, mm -hmm. those are my goals, my mission. So one final question before we close, before we close <coughs> the program is this. Would you please share with us a success story, something that you said has successfully completed your journey in this wonderful advocacy? Something special in my journey? Yes, something special for you. Uh, yeah, that would be nice. Something <coughs> special that you feel would be special to us. Um, well, when I, uh, I won an award um, for self-advocacy through okay. um, United Cerebral Palsy, okay. which I'm also on the board of United Cerebral Palsy Detroit, okay. um, but I won a self-advocacy award, um, and when I won that, that's when I met uh, Miss Wheelchair in Michigan in 2014, and she wow. told me about that pageant. And uh, I, was, I was not very confident um, that I would do well in something like that. And she, she encouraged me um, to do it because she had heard me right. um, talking when I accepted that self-advocacy award. And she said, That's, this mm -hmm. would be perfect right, Deb, for you. Would you please close? Uh -huh. So. Thanks, Emma, so much for being our guest each host has transportation goals that include getting them to social events, sport, sports games, mm -hmm. volunteer sites, perhaps a job or a movie. Absolutely. There is a great need for those with challenges <clears throat> to have someone with a reliable Call C A R and the hours to drive and support one. Otherwise, we are actually at home and missing out on social contact, learning experiences, music events, and such play ability to plan for a day, be out and about. Is there some place our audience can learn more about your transportation efforts and perhaps encourage others to join in this effort? Those of us with special needs are vital to society and appreciate all those who support us, dream with us, and work, make dreams a reality. That's good. My name is David, David Kiro, <coughs> and you've been watching over TV, Demon TV, Public Access, and YouTube. I'm like a two comedian. Aww. My name is Amcon Castle. You've been watching on TV, CMN, and YouTube. I'm Ryan Dossier. We'll see you next time on Community Corner. Until then, good night.